Hello, this is Becky Chukaya. I'm an undergraduate student at Bilkent University in the physics department. This presentation video is for my project in Physics 101 and I will be showing you the footage of the experiment that I conducted in the physics lab. I will also explain the details of my experiment step by step and the material that I use in my experiments. This experiment is called Analyzing the Impact of Realist Height on the Final Velocity of a Rolling Cylinder. The objective of this experiment is to observe the relationship between the release height of a cylinder and its final speed at the end point of a ramp using kinematic equations. The five heights are chosen as 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 meters using a roller. The five heights are chosen each with a 0 0.1 meters difference from the next to acquire consistent results and to reduce the errors obtained in the experiment. To measure the heights, a ruler is used. The equipment that I used is a ramp, which is one meter, a cylinder, which has the radius of 0.03 meters, and the mass of 0.32 kilograms. I also used a box, a ruler, an electronic balance, and for computational results, I used a camera of a phone to record a video of each trial and the program tracker to plot XT graphs for each trial. Here you can see the equipment that I used for the experiment. The ramp is positioned for the heights and the cylinder is released in each trial. A box is put at the end of the ramp to make sure that the cylinder doesn't move after it reaches the end point of the ramp. After pressing the start button of the camera, the cylinder is released for each five heights and a video is taken for each five trials. The cylinder's mass is calculated with the help of the electronic balance. As you can see in the video, I'm calculating the mass of the cylinder with the help of the electronic balance. After taking videos for each trial, these videos will be uploaded to the program Tracker in order to analyze these videos and plot XT graphs for each of these trials. After plotting these graphs, the slopes for these graphs when the cylinder is nearest to the end point of the ramps will be measured by taking the slope, which means the derivative of the graph at the last time interval. The percentage errors will be calculated for each trial and the results will be evaluated when compared with theoretical results. The theoretical values for the speed for each trial will be calculated by the formula 2 times the square root of g times h divided by 3. Let's start with the height, which is 0 0.5 meters. The instantaneous speed obtained with the slope in the program tracker is 1.4 meter per second. The theoretical result obtained by the formula that I mentioned is 2.56 meters per second. By subtracting the experimental value from the theoretical value and dividing it by the theoretical value, this value is multiplied with 100 and the percentage error obtained is 45.2 percentage. This is also repeated for the other four heights, which are 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. 0 0.9 The theoretical and experimental results differ from each other because of the random errors due to friction, air resistance, unnoticed deformations of the cylinder and ramp during their contact, and imperfections in the surface or the cylinder material. The error percentage became less when the height increased. This was probably due to the decrease in friction when the ramp was lifted up since contact between the cylinder and the ramp became less observable. If we ignore these errors in the experiment, it can be concluded that when the height increases, the final speed of the cylinder also increases due to energy conservations. Thank you for your attention.